All right, in this video, we are going to be upgrading the CPU in my HP Z420 workstation. This workstation currently has the E5-1607 CPU in it, and it's just so, so slow, unusably so, and I just figured it's, it's definitely time to upgrade. So I ordered on eBay a... E5 2687W V2 CPU that's eight cores. Um, and the only issue is it's coming all the way from China, and the delivery estimate says it's going to take another month. And so that's, you know, close to the end of July that, at, you know, at the time of filming, that's, that's a month away. And I really don't want to have to wait that long. So I have this spare board that we're going to use as a donor board. This has two E5-2640 CPUs in it. And so I figured it's uh, just a good exercise to perform the CPU upgrade. Hopefully I don't break this machine because this machine is my vital lifeline, especially for RAID stuff. And so I really don't want to break it. Hopefully we don't. So I have some nice uh, Arctic MX4 thermal paste here. Uh, the CPUs are still in here. We're gonna uh, start the process of removing those here in a minute. And um, I hopefully have all of the tools to perform this upgrade. That's why I'm out here in the shed where I have all these tools. So hopefully I have all the tools. So without further ado, let's get started with this. All right, so the first step in this process is gonna be removing these CPUs. So we need some form of Phillips head screw. Let's try this. It's all trial and error with screws. Looks like this will work. All right, so I took this heat sink off. I've got our isopropyl alcohol here. So let's start to clean this off here. All right, so how does this work? Again, I've never done this before. So I think you go here and then somehow this lifts up and out comes our CPU. So I'm gonna pay attention. So this is E5-2640. The arrow here is on the left side. I know you probably can't see that on camera, but here we have our E5-2640 CPU, which I'm going to set right here temporarily, and I am not going to put the heat sink back on this uh, motherboard, at least not now, because I don't feel that I necessarily need to put back on the heat sink for a motherboard that I I don't even know if this board works, to be honest. Um, so I'm going to set this off to the side here. All right, so now it is time to open up our HP Z420. Here's my paper towel for when I need it. Put the CPU off to the side here. I don't have a lot of space. As you can see, this is a pretty messy workbench here, so I don't have a lot of space. I don't even have space for a monitor. So this needs a flathead screw, thankfully not a Torx T15. That's what the guide said, and I got really worried because I don't have a Torx T15. Maybe more appropriate. Yeah, that looks like that fits the length of the screw. The other one didn't really fit the length of the screw. And I'm trying to do sort of equal turns here. Again, I've never performed this upgrade before, so I really have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just trying to do equal turns here so that uh, there's equal sort of tension. I don't know how important that is, but I've heard in some machines that can cause issues if 
you don't count how many turns you do. So I'm trying to do it roughly equal. It looks like oh, we have one more here, and I think we may have to remove. Looks like we have a Phillips holding the fan on. I don't know if we have to remove the fan in order to do this, or maybe the whole assembly just comes off. It's starting to seem like that's the case. Although it looks like we have maybe one more hidden screw. So I think I need to take this memory fan off, which I don't know how to do. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I've got the memory fan out. Okay, look at this. So here's the, the memory fan is out. I'm not gonna worry about unplugging it because that's gonna be a pain to plug back in. And yes, there is indeed a hidden screw. So I did have to remove the memory fan in order to do this. I think I'll just barely be able to get it. I'm glad I have this super long screwdriver to be able to do this because I, I wouldn't be able to do it with a shorter screwdriver. I, I, it sounds like I'm stripping these screws, which is not ideal, but I don't have a, another size of screwdriver that would work, but it looks like I've got this off anyway. So I'm gonna set this screwdriver down, and it looks like this is connected here. The fan is connected here. So I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of move it out of the way here. And this should give me enough space. This is really janky how I'm doing this, but this should give me enough space provided it doesn't fall over to um, perform this upgrade. I may need to actually unplug this fan. All right, so I think I figured this part out. Now I've got to figure out how to do Okay, that seemed pretty self-explanatory. Let's do the other side here. Oh, I knew that would happen. I knew that would happen. Okay, so let's move this out of the way and then go like this. We gotta improvise a little bit. And then this should lift up fairly easily, hopefully. Come on. Okay, so here's this arrow here, I'm going to have to really pay attention to the way this is, this is situated. So the arrow here is, is right here. I don't know if you can see that little arrow on the top right of the CPU socket. I realized I'm probably also doing this upside down. Um, but I think if I just convert everything from right side up to upside down, this should be successful. So the arrow on the CPU, the arrow here on the CPU is in the top right and it's, it's facing outward. So I think what's going to have to happen is this CPU is going to have to go like this. It's going to have to go this way since this triangle faces outward, so then this triangle faces outward. And it looks like if I clean the CPU off, I think what's going to have to happen is that the font on the CPU, which I don't know if you can see that on camera, but the font on the CPU is upside down. So I think all I need to do is, as long as I know that the font is upside down on the CPU, then I think I have it oriented the right way, but I guess we'll try and 
hopefully not fail, but I can see that as a in the realm of possibility that this project is unsuccessful. Man, it is hard to get in here to wipe this off. This CPU upgrade is not as easy as I thought it would be. But again, I've never done a CPU upgrade before. So this is my first shot. And yes, indeed, the font is upside down. Okay, so that's encouraging news that the font is upside down. Hopefully I didn't get any isopropyl alcohol on the RAM. Um, so let's go ahead and perform this upgrade here. Now I'm realizing also just due to the spatial situation in which I am performing this upgrade, I'm not grounded at all. I'm wearing shoes. So I don't know if this is a particularly smart way to go about this, but um, I, I think it'll be fine. So here's the E5-1607, the crappiest CPU on the planet. And here is the E5-2640. I'll put that into view here. So it looks like the arrow... Here, as you can see, is here, and the font is upside down. So as long as the arrow is in the top right and the triangle faces outwards, then I think we are good to put this in. Looks like this is fitting perfectly. Perfectly. Yep, this is flush in the socket. Lovely. Okay, so that is in. So, I think we need to apply thermal compound, obviously, but I will do that after I close this up. It's going to involve me moving this around. Let's see. I have to be strategic about how I do this. I'm going to have to lift it up and then push really hard Let's see and fit it in that little slot here come on go in go in please go in oh my god come on come on there we go and then this side go in please go in please go in there we go all right so now it's time to dig out my arctic MX4 thermal paste, and then we will put this thermal compound on the CPU. All right, so here is the thermal compound. It looks like it came with this little spreader. Um, I don't think I'm going to need to use this, but this is a nice um, addition to the kit here. So I'm going to go one big dot in the middle, I think. That's how I want to apply this. I think that should be enough. Go a little bit more. It's probably not good to have too much thermal paste, but also not good to have not enough. So I figured it's good to be, you know, somewhat careful about how much thermal paste I put. And I think that looks like a pretty good amount. So now the CPU fan just has to go back on and the heat sink needs to be screwed. Okay, so I'm going to keep all these tools out just in case this upgrade fails. Put this memory fan on, bring the machine all the way back inside the house, set it up, um, and then we will go from there and uh, see if this upgrade succeeded. I'd have just powered up the machine, so let's see if it posts. I have no idea. That's a really good sign. It looks like it has successfully posted. So that's wonderful news. Whether the raid card will work is another question. There's the raid card. And hopefully it boots into Windows. I guess we'll find that out soon. 
and it looks like we something happened to our drivers. There are all 12 threads of the E5 2640. Um, yeah, we're getting no GPU. That's very, very weird. I don't know what the deal is with that. So this has been the successful CPU upgrade number one of two of my HP Z420 workstation to the E5 2640 CPU. Now I may make another video when I get the E5 2687W V2 in there. Um, I probably won't make another upgrade video, but maybe some sort of benchmark video or something along those lines. So look forward to that when I have that other CPU. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, please subscribe to the channel, and share this video. Thanks for watching.